Hey there guys, what's up? It's Avid Expert here. Now I know a few of you may have noticed I haven't been uploading videos recently as of my usual rate. I've taken a little bit of a break. If you want to go subscribe to my Twitter, you can keep up to date on information if anything like this occurs again. But I've just kind of had a stressful situation with family issues. Everything is being resolved now and I'm glad about that. But yeah, I'm just glad that we're back to a work in order again and I'm looking forward to creating more videos for you guys once again, getting into a standard route and honestly I've just really been missing uploading that in itself has stressed me out a lot I never knew not uploading would actually stress me out to this degree but I really felt like I was missing my obligation and responsibility to the channel and I know a lot of people really do appreciate the content so again I'm just really sorry about that and I hope you appreciate that we'll be getting back to a regular schedule again we're gonna be talking about Resident Evil Remake 2 I should really call this a mini series of some sort at some point maybe make a playlist around it because it's just going to be theoretically speculating about possibilities of Remake 2 while there is a lack of information about the game. I mean a lot of people are speculating and obviously this is the first thing that will happen when no information exists and when the information does come out obviously I will go back revisit these videos and see if we got anything right and also I'll correct anything that was wrong as well. But to be specific, we're going to be talking about the possibility of multiplayer and the possibility of DLC in Resident Evil Remake 2. Now this will be a little bit more of educated speculation, especially for the DLC portion of the discussion because there is evidence to link with that. And I do appreciate Game Mystery or Demo Demon having the discussion with me and we came to a lot of conclusions and ideas about Remake 2. He's got a good channel himself. I like to give him a few shout outs here and there because he is a good friend and I really hope some people can just go visit his YouTube because he's got a really really great but underappreciated YouTube and I really mean that I'm not just saying that because he's my friend his channel is excellent quality and I do mean that from the bottom of my heart now getting into the actual subject itself remake 2 and the possibility of multiplayer being in the game now Resident Evil 5 proved that multiplayer was to be one of the main elements that Resident Evil had been missing. A lot of fans very much appreciated this even though it was a major change and there was a lot of replay value in Resident Evil 5 you couldn't get in the previous games. I'm not saying that those games didn't have replay value but multiplayer increases the retention of a game tenfold for most people. I myself have gotten 15 or so playthroughs of Resident Evil 5 on the Xbox because I just played it with so many different friends on so many different difficulties and sometimes we've set challenges such as pistols only. These artificial challenges as well with the co-op gameplay and fluidity that will never be replicated with a bot and obviously the entertainment factor being in voice chat, you just get an entirely beautiful experience. Most of the games since Resident Evil 5's release have contained one form of multiplayer or another in the form of co-op or an extended game mode after you have completed the campaign. Capcom is obviously aware that multiplayer is a very well appreciated feature from the fans and it's definitely one of the features that needs to keep being improved upon as the franchise is expanded. It was surprising to see Resident Evil 7 contain no multiplayer at all. Honestly speaking though Resident Evil 7 does seem to be a form of tech demo and even an experiment from the company to test new things and I do believe Resident Evil 8 will be back onto track with multiplayer. So Remake 2 would that contain multiplayer? Now that's a possibility and there are many different ways they could implement this without rewriting any of the canon law or rewriting it in ways that don't affect it to such an extent that it would break the story. So the first criticism I would hear is that choosing Leon or Claire and then having the campaign have a co-op partner would change up the canon law of the game. That wasn't how the story was experienced and any segments that contain a rating between different characters was cutscene exclusive and a very minor part of the game. And so it would be a little bit abysmal to rewrite the canon law to that extent. And also another argument that would be applied would be that you don't get the full single player horror experience if you experience it with a friend. Now there are people who obviously already know Resident Evil 2's story 
but with it being a remake we don't know what changes are going to occur to the story and the environment but regardless of that not experiencing that by yourself for the first time that could change so many things and if the story is resembling Resident Evil Remake 2 and they stick to it to a large degree there are still going to be newer players to the franchise and their first experience is still important to consider. Now I actually agree with this point because if you look at Dead Space as an example Dead Space 1 was a horrific and terrifying game. Dead Space 2 wasn't as scary as Dead Space 1 however it still retained a lot of horror and traumatic experiences within the gameplay itself. Now Dead Space 3 was a very different experience because that was the first Dead Space that allowed full cooperative multiplayer experience through the whole single player campaign. And I remember going from feeling absolutely terrified when the Necromorphs were appearing in Dead Space 1 to trapping my friend inside a door and laughing at him as he was slain and died and that was a hilarious experience. That is not something you should be feeling from a horror game, so I definitely feel that argument rings true and it is quite valid. You could even take this argument to a logical extreme into a very, very, very niche category and say that some individuals that experience the story by themselves and then want to talk and share that experience with others but then find out that they don't have the same kind of experience due to the other individual playing it co-op have their own immersion and experience with the game ruined. However, I do believe there's a very good workaround within this and it already works within Resident Evil 2's lore itself. So if you remember with Honk's prologue and backstory to Resident Evil 2 as the false survivor, his entire crew is wiped out right at the start. Now this could actually be rewritten just a little bit. You could have one of his squad mates survive and this could work as a co-op partner unlockable after you complete the main campaign. Having another survivor through the Hunt campaign would work really well with co-op and on top of that you could actually kill this survivor near the end of the game so that Hunk just survives himself as the sole survivor and that would also still work within the canon law. It's a very minor change which wouldn't really change too much and it's almost the same as when they changed the core story about how Raccoon City was destroyed, the number of missiles, which direction they came from etc etc. That has been a detail that has varied greatly throughout the different games and recollections of that event. There are also other story changes that are more major and I won't get into them but again Again, they change throughout many of the game. We could go on about that subject for a while because Capcom is not new to changing the canon law, but they've always retained this level of the conclusion being the same. And what I mean by that is even though some of the events might change, it's more the middle of the path changes. The actual start and the end seems to be the same in each of the different versions. So although, for example, Raccoon City might have been destroyed by multiple missiles, or just a single missile in different versions and some of these versions even have the missile being a different type nuclear and non-nuclear the result is still that Raccoon City was destroyed, a cover-up was enacted and all the zombies were pretty much wiped out along with any remaining survivors. So having one extra squad mate survive only to be slayed right at the end of the game would work very very well and it would just be such a minor change nobody would care and it would actually fit within Capcom's already established behaviour of changing some of the events to a degree. The last qualm I think people could have is that multiplayer would not work very well in a fixed camera angle perspective if the developers decide to remake the game with such a foundation. The counter argument to that however would be Resident Evil Outbreak itself which is that exact concept and it worked perfectly. So I don't really think multiplayer would be a very bad thing for Remake 2 and as we established the fact that it enhances the multiplayer replayability of the game it could add so much to it and if again it was only unlocked as the fourth campaign after you completed other portions of the game then that would also mean that everybody got the traditional horror experience as it was intended the first time and could also share that with others. I think that would be the perfect way to implement it if it was going to be in there. Let me know what you guys think about that below. I would be glad to hear about your thoughts and discussions on the subject of multiplayer but I kind of want to get into the next subject now which will be will Resident Evil Remake 2 now contain DLC? 
I think there is a very strong case to make that Resident Evil Remake 2 will actually contain DLC. A lot of people may be surprised to hear that speculation, but I do believe, like I said, it's an educated guess. I'll go through the reason why I believe this is, and I'm sure a lot of people will agree. Again, this does not necessarily mean that's a bad thing, but I do believe it will be the case. So if you look at Resident Evil Remaster 1, this was the first time they'd really truly taken a remaster to a serious level. This isn't the first time Capcom has released an altered game on a different version of hardware with differences to the original. Even cutscenes have been added to the Code Veronica X edition over the original for example. However, I would say this is the first time it was taken to a high level of craftsmanship and a high level of passion and project development cost. So looking at Resident Evil Remake 1, you just got the base game involved in there for the price, there was no additional DLC and it contained all of the single player attributes one would expect, nothing was cut, nothing was put under a price tag, this was a good thing. Now come in Resident Evil Zero Remake, this was announced after Resident Evil 1 and then released a whole year later. Resident Evil Zero was definitely the second remaster they have decided to take to a very high craftsmanship level production value and power passion. But the thing about Resident Evil Zero is they contain cosmetic DLCs just that were costume changes, nothing major. But it does show an evolution in Capcom's tactics that they want to start bringing DLC into the remasters and remakes. Do I think Resident Evil Remake 2 will continue this tradition? I think it's the only logical conclusion from a business standpoint and I think the fans would be quite naive to assume that it wouldn't. If we end up having Remake 2 containing no DLC at all, not even costume, I would be a very surprised individual and I'm sure many of you would too after learning about that if you didn't know about that fact already. That leads to the obvious question of what DLC will Remake 2 contain? Now the obvious conclusion is that it will contain costume DLC as we discussed, but there is a possibility that the evolution in the industry will continue and Capcom may use this as an opportunity to experiment if they can go a little bit further. So I'm not saying anything shady is going to occur here, but we may see another extended campaign from another raccoon survivor and that's something I could consider a beneficial relationship between us as consumers and Capcom as developers trying to make Make money. A lot of people love Raccoon City and the potential of stories to be told within that city are many. There are so many angles you could take that from, umbrella operatives to just random survivors on the street or another police officer. I don't want to get too much into the random theories about what DLC are going to come, but I do think DLC is evolving and becoming more prominent in remasters is the only logical conclusion to occur. It's not like the industry is going to stagnate and stop changing, I just wonder if Remake 2 will be one of the first games to go and expand upon the original game with DLC that conclude new stories areas and contain whole new isolated incidents. I also haven't heard anybody bring up the two points of Remake 2 containing multiplayer or DLC, so I just thought people might enjoy this video while the lack of information still exists. Let me know what you think about this below anyway, I put a lot of thought into this and as I said at the beginning of the video, Demo Demon helped me theorize a lot of this and conceptualize this and worked on the video to a degree with me in terms of giving me ideas. So if you could go visit his channel, as I said, I'd very much appreciate that. Other than that, let me know what you think about these things, the DLC and the multiplayer in the comments below. But as always guys, I just hope you're having a beautiful day, take it easy, and peace.